Hey what's up guys it's me again and welcome back to my channel Meta What Ifs. Today I am back with a new story. The name of the story is What if Naruto became cold and ruthless and yeah guys it is an unscripted story and my own idea. Now before continuing this I'm sorry for not uploading regularly. I told you before that well yeah I know that I'm not regular and it might take me a few more days to get regular and yeah from this point onwards I will be regular on this channel and you can be comfortable sending me your ideas no matter how much odd it is I will try my best to cover it I promise that much at least even if I don't know the anime I'm gonna do some research and after finding out about it I will do my take on it in this perspective I will be making videos from now on and moving onwards yeah you guys deserve better I apologize for not letting you guys in on this well the thing is that I didn't have enough time to make a community post so that you guys will be aware and yeah I just got back I was away with my family for the time being for a few days and now that I'm back I can be regular again so moving onwards make sure you leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I'm sorry once more and another thing if you're new to the channel or if you want to suggest any idea do the go to the comment section and you know write down and describe your comment there what your idea is and then post it if I'll see it I'll make it I swear anyways that is what I need to say. Now, moving on to the story. I hope you like today's story, and without any further ado, let's begin with our today's story. Our story begins five years after the QB attack in Konoha Gakure no Sato. As you go towards the said village at night time to see that it was October 10th, the night of the QB attack. But five years later, it was regarded as the QB's defeat festival, where people and their families gathered to reminisce of what happened five years ago. Most of them did while a bunch of mob filled with hatred and rage were gathered for their own cause, and that was to hunt down the demon, the resident five-year-old in Churiki, known as Naruto Uzumaki. As now we see, currently, after being captured and beaten for a few minutes, he was thrown against an alleyway wall, which was blocked off by the mob from the other side, the only opening. As the leader of the mob then said, with a smirk on his face, now that we have cornered you, demon, we're gonna carry out our revenge. As Naruto, finally having had enough, then stood up, then and there, decided that he would fend them off and protect himself, because he wasn't wanting to take this bullshit. He wasn't going to listen to old man Hiruzen's words any longer, because his words for the time being have proven nothing. As now we see Naruto then said, Why the hell do you think that I am a demon? As everyone became quiet, as Naruto vented on, what did I ever do to you? How can I be a demon? I was just born and I don't even know. What are you all talking about? As everyone began to laugh and chuckle, as the leader then said, Ah, you stupid boy. No, demon, do you think that we don't know? You taking this boy's form after you were weakened by the fourth Hokage. We know who you are, Kyubi no Yoko. And tonight, you will die. Paying for all the sins that you have done, we will finally finish what the force started and avenge our brothers and sisters who have died as everyone cheered. As now we see Naruto shaken up, but that is when his resolve even more hardened because he knew for sure he wasn't any demon or stupid old fox that did all this to them. I'm not a demon. I didn't do anything. I don't even remember. If I would have been a demon, I would have killed you. Wouldn't I have been? Regardless of what you say, Brad, now that you have been weakened, you are to die. As now we see, Naruto was looking at every possible corner to escape from them, but so far every corner he could escape from was blocked. And just his luck, mostly most of the time, since he was three, when the mob began chasing him, he would be saved by a neon boot that was nearby, or from appearing from the shadows, but seeing his luck might have run out, nobody has came till yet. Naruto knew that he has to defend for himself for the time being, and seeing that he had no other choice, he rushed towards the man that had holster on his leg. Taking out a kunai, Naruto literally dragged it onto his stomach as everyone stopped. As they saw that, Naruto was standing there against the man's stomach. As after moving backwards, Naruto yanked out the kunai as the blood splattered everywhere. Even onto his face as the man that was regarded as the leader of the mob fell down to his knees. As Naruto, who was filled with rage because he didn't understand why this was happening to him. Why only him was being targeted. 
specifically by these people being called a demon and so on was about to attack even more. But that is when the Anbus arrived, just in the nick of time, as the people were shaken to the core. But the Anbus were not alone. This time Hiruzen was there as well. Take Naruto to the hospital and get him checked. As Hiruzen then looked towards them with raged fill eyes, I warned you, didn't I? Okage sama, that, that demon killed, execute them all. And without saying any word, Hiruzen left as the Anbus charged towards the people and executed them and cleared off the alleyway like nothing happened there ever before. As now we see, Hiruzen was back in his office as the Anbus were there that rescued Naruto and took him away. What is the condition of Naruto? The boy is traumatized for the time being for what Inuichi-san could tell us. And not only that, the boy finally stood up for himself. <sighs> this is what I feared. What do you mean, Hokage-sama? Isn't it good thing? It is good thing. But the people... I fear them. What do you mean that you fear them, Hokage-sama? It's not them I fear. It's their mindset that I fear specifically. Seeing that the boy has finally stood up for himself, they might think of it as a chance for them to finally condemn, to the, condemn the boy to death. And I won't allow that to happen. Neither would we, Hokage-sama. We wouldn't. As that is when... We see the door open to his office and in came the three elders. We heard what happened, Hiruzen. How could you execute many civilians who were innocent? Innocent, you say? Koharu, quite a heavy word for people who were going to kill a five-year-old, a defenseless one. And he had to stood up for himself. The boy did, said Donzo. Yes, he had to defend himself because there was no one but thanks to all of you assigning the missions far away. This was planned, wasn't it? No. How could you even think that we would want to harm our own Jin Churiki? He is a precious weapon to our arsenal and would have weakened Konha, said Danzo. As now we see, Hiruzen narrowed his eyes and said, Any more mistakes and I will kill you. I know what you are doing. I don't have any proof, but I do know what you are doing. If I find any, even the slightest bit of a slip from you, I will end you all. To help with being a, my teammates and friend. I don't care. We we came here to tell you that the council has gathered and demanded an explanation for what you have done. They did, huh? Let's see what they have to say. As Hiruzen then arrived at the council chamber where the council was gathered and the civilians were literally yelling and Hiruzen did nothing but just closed his eyes and released killer intent to the point that everyone started to sweat. Some of them even began to pass out. As that is when Hiruzen then said, I will not tolerate this behavior. All of you not are toddlers. You are the esteemed members of the Council of Konoha. If you are going to act like this, you will be punished. As all of them now Understanding that the Hokage was pissed, began to simmer down. As Hiruzen then said, "What is this meeting about? The, the kid killed, killed uh, the kid killed the 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 civilians." Hokage-sama said, "The fearful leader of the civilian council, Mibuki Haruna, and so he was defending himself." I have warned you people more times than I could remember, in this short few years of span, that do not go after that kid, and yet you still ignore my words and go so. And how do you even know that the boy killed him? We, we, we heard from an eyewitness. Whom? Because I made sure that no eyewitness was left alive. What? Well, what do you mean by that, Okage-sama? Because it was me who ordered their execution. They broke the law. And if you do the same, you will be executed as well, Mibuki-san. Any of you. It goes for the same as all. Said Hiruzen, his gaze turning from left to right at everyone. As after that we see, Hiruzen has said, this is waste of time. If this is all you have to say, then I'll be leaving. As after that we see, Hiruzen got up, adjourned the meeting and left towards Naruto. Whom we see was still visibly shaken, but has woken up. But there was something about him, his eyes, his innocence, they were that was lost. Naruto's eyes were cold, cold as iceberg as Hiruzen entered. Those were the eyes of a seasoned shinobi who has went through enough trouble and trauma and now has learned how to cope with it. Naruto, my boy. What happened? You know damn well what happened there, out, out there, Hokage-sama. Do you not? Said Naruto coldly. 
as risen and said, What what do you mean by that, Naruto? Those people. You told me that they will stop. They will realize. But they won't. I come to realize that. No matter how much I try, no matter what I do, those people will always think that I'm some sort of a monster, a demon. They even call me the damn QB. Nay. Mokage-sama. Answer me this, said Naruto looking towards Hiru's and dad in the eye. Am I the Kyuubi? Am I the same Biju that attacked five years ago? As Hiruzen was shocked that Naruto asked this question, but he knew that it was unavoidable. So he sighed and said, No, Naruto, you're not the Biju or the monster. But you do have the possession of it. What do you mean by that? The Biju is sealed within you. The fourth Okage chose you as the seal and seal the Biju within you. Why would he do that? Huh? What do you mean by that, Naruto? It's a great honor. Honor, you say? Honor that the people chase me every night? As Naruto then looked towards him, as he then said, You know what? I'm done with this. If this is how Shinobi system works, then to hell with this. I don't want any part of this. I don't want to be a Hokage of these people. They deserve to die. I'd rather the BG should have finished them than they finish what the fourth started. Said Naruto as he left. And Ruzen knew at that day and at that moment, Naruto lost each and every ounce of respect that he had for the Shinobi as well as for Konoha. And so time began to pass by. The attacks continued to happen, but each time more brutal results came. Naruto was becoming more cold and ruthless. He would execute immediately the mob. Not a single soul was left to tell the tale. Naruto also found out that he might be targeted by Shinobi since at his 8th birthday, the mob that targeted him was that of Shinobi's. Mizuki, one of Naruto's teacher, was the one who orche orchestrated all of this and he was the one who was found dead. A spear literally pierced straight through his skull from bottom to the top as he was hung there as a in the center of the whole village. Everyone was downright traumatized, but they all knew who did this. Only one could, and that was Naruto himself, the Nine Tails. As time began to pass by, we see Naruto reach at the age of nine. As it was cold and he was wandering around late, late at night since he had nobody waiting at home for him. So that is what he did, until he came face to face with a girl with white pale eyes who was being bullied by two of the Ganins of Konoha. Seeing that he detested the shinobi, Naruto's, Naruto was disgusted by them and, with snarl on his face, arrived there. What the hell do you think you're doing? said Naruto. As seeing what the brat has been capable to do, the two Ganins thought that they would be able to gang up on him, and both of them ended up beaten to the point that they could not even move an inch of a muscle. As Naruto looked towards the girl and asked, while his face was covered in blood, Are you okay? As his fists were dripping the blood of his victims, the girl was scared. You're a Yuga, aren't you? Your eyes say so. As that is when we see, from the shadows appeared another Yuga who was older. His name was Ko and he was the caretaker of Hinata. You damn vile monster, get away from her! As Naruto grabbed onto his hand that he was going to use to strike Naruto and literally implied so forced that his hand began to redden and he could barely f feel any nerves or power in that hand as even his bones began to squeeze tighter as Ko was in pain as Naruto then said you were hidden he watched all of this happen and yet he didn't do anything what are you talking about I was searching for her oh yeah then how did you come out at right amount of time when you saw that what I did to those kids as that is when we see the other Yugas came there, and it was Yashi, the leader of the Yuga clan, who arrived there as well. As he then looked towards Naruto, immediately realizing who he was from the escapades of the boy that he heard from the council, he too was fearful, as he saw the two Ganyans that were laying there beaten down to a batter, and his daughter, who was scared. What did you do? <laughs> ask, your, ask your lackey over here what he did. Instead of protecting, he was hiding there, watching the boys bully her. If you don't believe me, listen to her own words. All I did was protect her. As now we see, Naruto let go of his hand as Ko was finally able to catch his breath. 
but his hand was in deep pain as he had other thing coming his yashi then asked as naruto began to leave go what the boy said is is it correct no it's obviously a lie i was searching for her as hirata seeing that naruto was courageous enough to stand up for himself then said after finding some sort of power in within her no i i was being bullied and 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 he left me i he let suddenly let go of my hand and left saying that he will be back as that is when hiyashi's eyes narrowed as he used the seal to torture ko until he stopped moving as every other yuga who was from the side branch was feared by this take his body and burn it i don't even wish to see his face let's go hinata as now we see hinata was gazing still back at naruto who in this heavy snow was while his hands were still dripping of the blood of his victim was moving back towards his home as now we see time passed as naruto reached at the age of 13 he was forced by hiruzen sarto to attend the academy as per it was law to uh, to be attended by all who had possessed chakra and since the council was forcing hiruzen to make sure that naruto became a shinobi but at the final test naruto deliberately failed each and every bit of the test because he didn't have wanted to become a shinobi so after failing it for the third time while the other gangs graduated we see that naruto was about to leave as hiruzen arrived what do you want okage sama How long are you going to go on with this Naruto? You cannot be a civilian. Your life is not normal any longer. What you possess, then take it. Should I release it now? No. Why? Why would you do that? Because you say that my life cannot be normal. So if I release it, then I can be on my own life. It's not so simple, Naruto. You will die if once you release the bijou. Is that so? How about I make a deal with the damn thing and then maybe who knows it might find a way to spare me I mean it's the goddamn nine tails right as Hiruzen was fearful of that thing the most of all because if now the nine tails join forces together another massacre and this time a one that will not be able to be prevented by any hokage even if the first came here himself will take place and they will all perish and become history of the pages that will be forgotten in the shinobi history as you know they said you can leave naruto as after that we see iruka then said why are you always protecting mokagasama the boy has no will to become a shinobi you don't understand iruka naruto has great potential he hasn't even used e- e- any ninjutsu of sort and yet the physical powers that he shows is more than enough to take down shinobis but he has killed a lot of people people who came after him he was only defending himself that is what naruto says and you believe it you believe his words my people have been lying to me since the boy was born and to be honest i'm kind of fed up with it if this is what they deserve then so be it i have told them and warned them countless time to not go after the boy and yet they continue to ignore me as that is when we see naruto was resting as a few days have only passed until iruka came there along said anbus what is it what are you doing here sensei i thought i i failed you did but because there is a hidden loop test that was discovered by hokage sama you have graduated naruto what you have been able to defend yourself against shinobi such as chunin ranks and that is why you have been given this vest wait what are you on about said naruto with narrowed eyes You have to work for Konoha for only an year or so as a chunin and only after that you'll be allowed to choose freely what you want to do. What? As he was in arrived there as everyone else began to fear that Naruto was getting enraged more and more. What the hell does this mean, Okage-sama? Said Naruto. Naruto, this means that you have to work. Is it is as it is. But I do not wish to be a shinobi. You're not. You're hired contracted shinobi. It's still the same thing. It isn't. You're working on a contract based ways for us. Think of it as a repayment for the allowance that Kona has given you to survive so far. Damn it," said Naruto as he gritted his teeth. "So this is how you're going to play? Yes. You leave me no choice, Naruto. This is the only thing I can use now. Fine. An ear. An ear alone. That is all I ask." As now we see Naruto then said, "Who's going to be in my team?" "Well, that's the thing, Naruto." You'll be on your own. What? Nobody's 
well going to take you in the team since all the teams of rosters are filled you're on a reserve and you will be contracted by me and me alone to do some missions and as your first assignment it is to hunt down these bandits and to retrieve the Raijin sword of the second Hokage that was stolen by Hanma one of our shinobis that has escaped all right where is the location have you found it down that is the thing Naruto you have to find it as well damn it fine I'll do it as after that we see Naruto pack the stuff and left as Iruka then asked, but Hokage-sama, that group is hard to find. They are still in Land of Fire because they deliberately let us know that they are here and they mocked us for many years. What do you think that Naruto will be able to bring it back? Even if he doesn't, I will send out one of the shinobis to keep an eye on him. But why? If things go south, at least the thing we'll be able to do was make sure that Naruto is able to escape alive from there. In this way, I hope the boy realizes that he needs our help as much as he thinks that we need him. I see. Hopefully it works, Okakasama. As now we see, Naruto was away only for a week from Konoha and felt at peace. But he knew that he had to do this goddamn job for one year or, or, or else Konoha won't be off his back in case. And that is why, by his luck or by his instincts, he was able to stumble upon the, well, group that has stolen the Raijin sword. They were currently nearby Konoha in a hidden cave. Naruto took out two kunai uh, uh, from his holster and just walked in there. Wherever he went, neck slashed or stabbed. Sounds were heard as the Anbu who was watching him was none other than Yugao Uzuki. As she was quite shocked and her being a veteran Anbu and Konoichi was almost close to throwing up because of how brutal a 13 year old could be she was seeing firsthand. The boy didn't even flinch or show any emotions. On the other side, he was being painted red by the bloods of his enemies. And on the other side, wherever he followed, dead bodies lay behind him. As now we see, he grabbed onto a katana while he stabbed a kuna in the neck of the one who he took the katana from. After unsheathing it, Naruto literally split and slashed a man in half. As Naruto was then shocked and only was able to dodge by bare inches as a man appeared there the ascension he held the katana in his hand and Naruto's eyes narrowed so you're Han Maha so you knew about me brat and yet you walked into my gang Tch. you killed a lot of good people and useful ones at that you know how much time it took for me to gather all of them <sighs> what a hassle I gotta begin all over again you don't need to worry because this is your this is where your journey ends, Hanma. All they wanted is the sword. They didn't ask for you to be alive. You think you'll be able to catch me? Said Hanma as he disappeared and teleported to the left side of Naruto and teleported again. I'm faster than you think, boy. I can move to many different locations and kill you in many, many times even before you blink an eye. Is that so? Said Naruto confidently. Let's try. As just before he teleported and could appear behind him with a slash, Naruto literally turned and slashed at him, splitting him in half. As now we see, Hanma's eyes widen as he split it in two, now laid on the ground, literally shocked. As Naruto looked up, at, looked down at him with his katana that was dropping blood. You know, funny thing, Hanma, being attacked so much all my life, my instincts have reached a point where I don't even need to be awakened. For my body to dodge these type of mediocre attacks. As Naruto then stabbed the sword katana straight through his mouth to the ground. And took the Raijin sword. As that is when Naruto after cleaning it and cleaning himself at a nearby river. Then began to walk back. And stopped and looked towards where the Konoichi was hiding. You know you go son. If you want to watch over me. You need to do a better job. Because I can detect you since we left Konoha. As Yugao was quite shocked and decided that she needed to arrive back at Konoha as fast as she could to report this. And that is what she did. She arrived one day before Naruto and reported this to Hokage in the council chamber as the whole council was now fearful of the boy. As Donzo for the first time then stood up and said angrily, The boy is too dangerous, Hiruzen. He is not loyal to Konoha. If this goes on after one year, God knows what he might do. You need to find a way to make him loyal to us. If not, then we need to eliminate the boy. To help with being the Ninetales Jinchuriki or the Ninetales. We can find another Jinchuriki if we need to. But him, 
He needs to go. Are you insane? If you are not going to help us, then we have no other choice but to resort to other things. As that is when Naruto bursted through the doors of the council chamber. Here's the sword that you asked for, Okagasama. Nobody even there, not even the shinobis, decided to speak a word because they knew if they enraged the boy, he they might be the next target on his list. As Naruto was about to leave, one of these poor, stupid civilians that said, You damn monster! Why did you even was born here? As Naruto literally threw a kunai that pierced straight through his skull, penetrating his brain and exiting from the other side, killing him instantly. As nobody was able to flinch before that happened, as Naruto then said, Don't you dare call me a demon. Careful what you wish for, or you might get what you really want so badly, said Naruto before he left. As after he left, Danzo then said, The boy, as you see, is too much dangerous. We need to do something about him, Hiruzen. If you won't, then we will take the matter in our own hands. Be my guest. You see, in this way, he will not only hate the shinobis even more, he will make sure that the ear passes and he will be able to successfully conduct each and every task that we do to him. And don't worry, I know just a way. If this fails, then... You can do whatever you wish. What is it? I have informed Jiraiya. He'll be back here as soon as possible to tell everything to Naruto. I've informed him everything already. As now on the other side we see Naruto was returning from the Ichiraku ramen shop, the only shop that he felt at peace at. After eating a bowl of ramen, he was returning until he stopped in front of his storeroom and said, Mind telling me what are you doing there? Sanin of Konoha, Jiraiya. As Naruto turned his eyes narrowly towards the person who was standing there with a smirk on his face. Well, Brad, I gotta give it to you. You really were able to find out who I am. You did your homework. Ten points for that. I don't need your points. Neither do I need you here. Just answer the damn question. What do you want from me? Ah, so you deduce that I want something from you. It's obvious that much is, at least. Well, to tell you the truth, Brad, well, Sensei is worried about you not being loyal to Konoha. He should be, because I'm not. Is that a threat? No. Once I'm done, I'll leave this hellhole. Once and for all. Where are you gonna go, Brad? There are a lot of threats out there that might be coming after your life. What do you mean by that, Jiraiya? What threats? The only threat I see is Konha itself. The people here can't just shit without cursing my name. And you think that I'm at peace here and safe here? If not out there? Listen, kid. I'm gonna be completely serious with you. There's a group known as Akatsuki that I'm currently investigating. They are targeting and they're going to be targeting Biju soon and in Chudikis. Why? God knows why. I'm not able to deduce that much yet, but it is something about the Ten Tails or some being like that. That is all I could think of, as that is when Naruto heard a voice. We need to talk. Cut that bullshit, Jiraiya. I don't believe it. Wait. Before you go, if if you ever change your mind, just don't take too much long. I'll be here in the village. Come find me. Fine, I will. As after that, the door slammed shut as Jiraiya left. As now we see Naruto sat down in his bed as he then said, Talk. You don't need to talk out loud. Just lie down and close your eyes. I'll bring you inside. As now we see, Naruto did as he was told so, as he was now standing inside his mindscape. So this is the legendary Kyubi no Yoko. As Kyubi narrowed his eyes, looking towards Naruto, but saw no fear, and then it smirked. As Naruto's eyebrow rose, why are you smirking? <laughs> because you have shown no sign of fear. You see, me being the strongest bees, you respect power and strength, something that you possess both morally and physically, brat. And not only that, you are quite interesting to watch at. As Naruto raised an eyebrow again, why did you deduce that? <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? You, in this short span of time, have not only made the whole village that was regarded as the strongest village in the whole elemental nation fear you, but also brought it down to its knees, where they demand that you be near them, and they want to control you no they can't but one thing is for sure they fear me 
Yes, you are right. After my name, your name is the only one that they fear. You got that right. But why have you brought me here? It's about the ten tails thing that the old fool was muttering about. Ten tails? Yes. You see, we are all. All nine bijus are a part of it. It was de defeated by the te by the sage of the sixth spot, and then we were born by splitting the chakra of it. It was a powerful, mindless monster, not like us. I see. Then, what of it? If it is allowed to be reborn, that destruction will pursue. To hell with this world. I don't care about it if it is destroyed or not. I mean, they had it coming because of their arrogance. <laughs> Even if that might be true, I don't want to be a mush part of a, ta a mindless beast, you see. So you want me to go on a crusade against the Zakotsky? Yes. And you want to know one thing that Hiruzen kept a secret? What is? Your parents. As Naruto's eyes nerd, how do you know about that? It's simple. Because your mother was my previous Jinchuriki. What? What do you mean? You see... If you rip out that piece of seal over there, you'll be able to see them. The left imprint of their soul within the seal. It's better than explaining and you believing that I lied, than show you what it is. As Naruto decided to do what the QB did, and he even helped Naruto do that. And after gulping for a bit, he ripped the seal for on the side. As suddenly the whole thing changed, the atmosphere changed from a sewer to a white field, where he saw a red-headed woman and a blonde-haired man that he recognized immediately. You're my father? said Naruto with a disgusted look, as Binato was quite shaken. What do you mean by that, Naruto? Of course I am. As Naruto literally punched him in the gut so bad that Minato's feet lifted off from the ground as he fell face first to the ground as well. Because of you, you damn bastard, my life turned to hell. I had to fend for myself, said Naruto, shaking with rage, as Kushina gave him a hug. Enough, Naruto. Enough. I know what your father did, what we did was wrong. But at the time, we too were foolish enough to believe that the people of Konoha will be able to see past their hatred and accept you for who you are. I'm sorry, son. I know you're right. And we're wrong. But all I can say now is I'm sorry. I shouldn't have trusted those bastards. None of them. As Naruto finally did something that he hasn't done in a long time. Since the first day he lifted off that kunai and slashed that man. And that was shed tears. He let it all out. And after he was finally calmed down. He was comforted by his parents. We see that. He asked about how did this all happen and how they came together. And after having a few moments and good memories where he, for the first time, did another thing, and that was smile, we see that. Both Minato and Kushina looked sad. Why are you sad? Tojan, Kajan, said Naruto with a smile. Because we're about to leave Naruto. As Naruto smiled, fell, what, what do you mean by that? You see, we left only an imprint of our soul. The chakra that we stored is minimum, and we're going to fade away soon, son. As both of the parents had tears, as Naruto did as well. As after a tearful hug, we see that both of his parents told him that they were proud of him, and they respect his wishes of not becoming a shinobi, and do whatever he wished with his life. They will always be there with him and love him and respect him. We see that both of them vanished, as Naruto was in tears, and now back to the sewer in front of the QB. And now you see? Yeah, I get it, said Naruto wiping his tears. Thank you. QB. It's Kurama, kid. What? My name. That is. My real name. I'll keep- I promise I'll keep it a secret. And we're gonna take these Akatsuki bastards down. My father told me that it was a moss person. And guessing that the Akatsuki is after them, he might be with them. As now we see the next morning came, and after the whole night, Naruto still couldn't imagine that his own father and mother were also betrayed like him. And he knew that he detested Konoha more than ever now. So now we see he went and found Jiraiya peeping at women. So this is what you are doing all this time, huh? Oh, uh, hey, Brad, said Jiraiya. You finally decided yet? Tell me where is this Akatsuki and how can I find them? Whoa, calm down there, Brad. Are you gonna get yourself killed? I won't. I need to find where they are. I had a conversation with my parents as Jiraiya flinched. Godfather. As Jiraiya literally flinched again because he knew if Naruto knew this much, then he might be 
already knowing the truth. I also had a conversation with the QB. This ten tails cannot be allowed to revive. If it does, the whole elemental nation can kiss its ass goodbye. What? That is a mindless monster. The nine beaches were created from it by the sage to stop it. And the sage had a difficult time stopping it. Do you think that in this present time, even if we all combine our strength, we can stop it together? If it is revived, no. Those damn idiots don't even know what they're doing themselves. We need to stop them. So you're gonna help me with this. I am on contract for Konha for one year. And this is the task that I would rather do than do any other bullshit. Fine. As after that we see, both Jiraiya and Naruto went to Hiruzen's office and commissioned this task. As both of them went to gather some resources and research. As after traveling for a bit, we see that they finally were able to track down the location in Amegakure. And then began the Akatsuki hunt. As Naruto and Jiraiya infiltrated the Amegakure and soon encountered the Akatsuki members. And one by one, hunted them down. More like Naruto did and Jiraiya for the first time was able to witness such brutality coming from his own godson. It was completely different from both Kushina Minato and the QB itself. A ruthless killing machine that would do anything for its own survival. An apex predator at its glory. As now we see Naruto after dealing with the final living member that was there, known as Zetsu, as his body was covered in black blood, got up, wiping his face. These are the most of them. Only one remains. Who? The masked person. Toby. We have to wait for him. And that is what they did. They waited. As now we see, Toby appeared there uh, from his mission. Zetsu, where are you? Zetsu won't be answering your call anymore, Toby. Or should I say Madara? What? Naruto Uzumaki. How did you get here? It's simple. I came to hunt you down. <laughs> you hunt me down? You know who you're messing with, boy. We are the Akatsuki. I don't know what you mean by we, because only one is left. The rest are long dead gone. As now we see, the lights turn on where he saw the hanging dead bodies of the Akatsuki members, and Naruto finally charged at him. Using his Kamui, he was about to escape, but Naruto appearing through the same Kamui vortex behind him literally sheathed his kunai straight through his skull, killing him instantly. As Jiraiya, who also rushed and arrived there, was shocked. Did you see who the face of this man was? No. As Jiraiya was the friend who, out of curiosity, saw the face behind the mask and was shocked. It can't be. Do you know him? It's the student of your father. But he died in the third grade Shinobi before. He was... Obito. He was a kind boy. What happened to him? I know what did. The Shinobi system did. As now we see... Jiraiya didn't have any answers for that because he knew the boy had lost enough in the world that he might too flip and turn to the bad side. As Jiraiya then said, What about you now, Naruto? I think I'm done with Konoha and with this Akatsuki. What? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I heard a few words before we left. What words? That the Konoha might be attacked by your fellow student and teammate, former one at least, Orochimaru. What? said Jiraiya with widened eyes. Then, then why didn't you tell me? I thought it was a bluff. Who knows? It might be. As Jiraiya and Uruchima, uh, Jiraiya and Naruto dashed as fast as they could as they arrived at the gates of Konoha, which was now destroyed. Because since Naruto and Jiraiya weren't there, Konoha was easily defeated by both Suna and by Oto combined, and Orochimaru had his revenge. What the hell? Naruto, because of you not telling me, we lost so much. Me not telling? Everyone has their own secrets, and besides, would you have believed me if I told you this? As Jiraiya was quiet. Well, that's that, I guess. As Naruto took off his headband and threw it at the gates of Konoha, where are you going? I told you I was contracted by Konoha, and I'm done with them. Seems like I really am. <laughs> Just my luck. Since there is no employer left, there is no need for me, the employee, to be tied down to this place, right? I'm free man now, Jiraiya. I can do whatever I wish. And to be honest, to hell with Konoha and to hell with all of you. And with this elemental nation. But Naruto, after everything, we... We! It was me who decided to do this. And Jiraiya, don't get me wrong, but you abandoned me as well. Don't expect that just because we did a few missions that we are buddy-buddy again. You have betrayed my mother and father. And even me. And that is something that I cannot forgive. You're on your own now, like you left me all those years ago. 
as with those words said, Naruto turned and began to walk away, leaving Jiraiya and a destroyed Konoha Gakure that was still smoking because of, well, all the derbies and fires that has been going on there. And as for Orochimaru, Suna found out that it was him behind all of this, and a war between them broke out, and their war was able to capture even the other villages, the minor villages like Takiyakure and Snow Country around, and that led to a fourth great shinobi war. Naruto obviously watched this from the sidelines, watching all of them using and trying all their best to dominate the other, and in the end, the shinobi system that they were also oh proud of was the cause and the reason why where millions and millions of deaths occurred. And this time, each and every person, each and every village was the one who lost this war because nobody won. Because millions of lives, lives were lost and all of them were much more weakened than their former selves, even beyond. And the next generation, fed up with the old one, executed their Hokages and Kages because they knew it was because of them and their hatred for the others that they have lost so much. All the while, Naruto just sat down and enjoyed his life because he was not a shinobi and he for sure didn't want anything to do with the shinobi world as this is where i'm going to be leaving the story of guys i hope you enjoyed this one and if you did then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel and if you're new you do make sure as well that you do so and if you have any suggestion then leave it in the comment section as this is it for the day i'll see you in the next one peace